Hey y'all, it's Kimberly Nexo back again with another DIY video. This DIY is going to be harder than any other ones that I've done so far. You're going to need about a date to put this vanity mirror together. And I'm going to link all the items that you're going to need to make this mirror in the description box below. The first thing that I'm starting off with is this piece of plywood that I got from Lowe's. It totaled to $24.58 and I got it cut into five pieces. I suggest y'all go to Lowe's to get your wood because at Lowe's whenever you buy your wood they'll cut it for free. So the largest piece of wood is cut 44 and a half inches by 30 inches. The two longer side pieces are cut 44 and a half inches by 4 inches and the two smallest side pieces are cut 31 inches by 4 inches. Now these sizes will build the perfect frame to fit behind your mirror and your vanity lights. It's only going to leave a half an inch around the whole entire mirror and then at the bottom it's going to leave about 2 inches. Now you're going to want to paint your wood before you nail it all together and I'll be using the Bare Premium Plus paint in the color Ultra Pure White 7050. You can use whatever type of white paint that you want to but this one came as a paint and primer all in one instead of having to prime and then paint separately. After my paint had fully dried I started putting everything together. I used corner braces and nails for this and it was pretty hard to do by myself so I got my partner to help me. I used two corner braces, one on each end of the longer side pieces to connect it to the larger frame and I connected these to the bottom of the larger frame. So first I screwed two corner braces, one on each end of my larger frame on the back side of it that I didn't paint. And then after that I got my partner to hold it up for me right on top of the larger side piece and I screwed down the other end of the corner brace onto that longer side piece. I chose not to use corner braces on my two shorter side pieces because they didn't fit accurately with the longer side pieces to the main frame. You kind of have to hold it down and nail it into the longer side pieces in the main frame in order for it to work. And the nails that I use are wire nails because if they're too thick your wood will begin to crack and break along the sides. After I connected my side pieces to my main board I got some more of my bare premium paint and I painted the sides that I didn't previously paint and then I let it dry for about an hour before I continued on with this project. Now it's time to do some real assembling of this vanity mirror. So this part is kind of tricky due to having to drill three holes into the wood and also becoming an electrician and learning how to wire things. It ended up being a lot easier than I thought it would be, mainly because I had my dad on the other end of the phone while I was doing this. So just pay close attention to these steps. The first thing I did was unbox the three vanity light bars that I ordered from Lowe's and position them onto my mirror to see if they'd fit right. Each set of vanity lights came with a pack of screws, so you don't have to buy extra screws for this part and you only need to use one screw on each end of each vanity light plate. After you screw down the ends of your plates, put the face back on them to see if it all fits together. If it doesn't fit, unscrew them and reposition them until it fits the way that you want it to and then you can start the next step which will be drilling holes through the wood underneath these plates. Now in order to get your wiring to work right, since I'm not just hanging these lights on the wall, I decided to build a frame. You have to drill holes through the holes that are inside of the plates in order to wire it correctly. In order to do that, I have a drill and a drill attachment head called a split point drill bit. And all that I'm going to do is drill a hole through the wood through the holes that are already in the plates so that I can stick my extension cord wire through that. First thing you want to do before you start wiring this is make sure that there's nothing plugged up. You don't want to electrocute yourself or start an electric fire or have anything explode. 
Next thing we're going to do is start wiring these lights together. So I went to Walmart and I got this extension cord for around $2 and I cut the head off of it. Then I cut down the middle of the cord just a little bit in order to separate the two. What we're going to want to do is expose the copper wires inside of this extension cord in order to connect that to the copper wires that are on our light bars. Next, you're gonna wanna be really gentle and cut through each end of the extension cord wire to expose those copper wires. What I did was use some scissors. There are certain cutters for cutting through extension cords. I just had scissors on hand at the time, so it's more convenient for me. So I used the scissors to gently cut through the extension cord without cutting through the copper wires. Once I got through the rubber part, I slid that off and exposed my copper wires that I will be using to connect to the copper wires inside of the lighting bar. You're gonna have to connect each extension cord piece to each lighting bar. So that means you have to cut extra extension cord. Make sure y'all get a long enough extension cord to do this. You're gonna have to measure how long your cord needs to be to connect from one lighting bar to the one closest to it and then cut that. Then repeat the step that you just did by cutting through the rubber part of the ends of the extension cord to expose two sets of copper wires on each end of the extension cord that you cut. So on each set of cords, you should have four exposed copper wires. You should have a total of three extension cord pieces. The longest one needs to have the head that you stick into the wall connected to it, so don't cut off the head that you stick into the wall. The other two pieces of extension cord need to be just long enough to connect your left lighting bar to your top lighting bar and your right lighting bar to your top lighting bar. Get your pieces of extension cord that you cut and string them through the holes that you drilled into your wood. In order for your lights to work successfully, you have to make sure that all of your wires are connected into one wire that you will plug into the wall. The trick to this is to each side of your extension cord, there's one smooth white casing around your wire and then on the other end, it's a rigid casing around your wire. Whenever you cut through it and separate the two, make sure you connect the rigid edge to the white wires and the smooth edge to the black wires. This is a must. So rigid, white, smooth, black. Get the copper wire sticking out of your rigid end and twist those copper wires around the copper wire sticking out of your white wires in the lighting bar. You twist those up into one and then get wire connector and twist that on top of that until you feel it whenever it clicks. Once it clicks down, those are connected successfully. Then do the same thing to the smooth end of your extension cord that you cut. Connect the copper wire sticking out of the smooth end onto the black wires. Then twist those together with your fingers and then twist wire connector on top of that. After you're done wiring everything, put the base plates of your vanity lights back on and secure them into place using the lighting sockets that come with your vanity plate. Next is to test everything out, make sure that we did everything right. Put one light bulb into each vanity light bar to see if they're all working correctly. All three of the light bulbs that you put in light up, that means that you wired everything correctly and now you could start putting your mirror on it. Now all the hard work is over. The last thing that we have to do is add our mirror. I used E6000 glue to secure my mirror down to my frame. And the mirror that I use is a frameless rectangular mirror that I got from Lowe's. It's 36 inches by 24 inches and it's beveled edged. Since it's beveled, it slopes down into the frame and it looks really nice. So I used a total of two tubes of E6000 glue because I didn't want my mirror to budge at all. Then I placed my mirror on top of that. I centered it as well as I can. So this part might take some time if y'all feel like it's uneven. It should be pretty even on the sides of the mirror whenever you place it down. Then I added all my light bulbs to it. I used the box that it came with and I weighed it down overnight. Some tools and my kabuki box which is full of makeup. So that's all that I have for this video you guys. If you liked it give it a big thumbs up. If y'all have any questions on building this mirror, leave a comment below and don't forget to subscribe. Thanks for watching. Bye y'all.